Okay, so chapter 14, what do you know about what we're going to read it? It's about long term liability. <laughs> what about long term liability? What's some advantages and disadvantages of the um, bond financing and insurance and retirement and notes? Okay. <clears throat> So that's a good start. Let's talk about bonds. Bonds um, are a form of long-term liability. And how do we define a bond? It's a written promise to pay a certain amount for a service. For a service? Well, it's a written promise to pay an amount for a bond. I guess it's a better way to put it. Okay, so bonds are just like stock. Yes, an investment. Okay. Written promise to pay an amount for a par value. Okay. Which is identified when you get the bond, along with interest. Okay, so it's important. Now, the advantages of a bond do not affect owner control, meaning it doesn't matter how many bonds you issue, nobody can have massive control or even remotely any kind of control over your organization. Interest on bonds on the, from the, the business perspective is tax deductible. Uh, bonds can increase return on equity. How do you think they increase return on equity? The higher the return, the, um, the higher the return. Say it again, the higher the return. The higher the return with the borrowed funds that it pays and interest on the funds is, is uh, a greater return on the equity. Okay, so we're basically saying the returns that increase based upon us issuing these. Um, increases the owner's equity, correct? Yes. Disadvantages. Bonds require payments of both periodic interest and par value at maturity. So, um, unlike a loan or unlike some other forms of liabilities that generally allow you to pay interest um, you know, at maturity, a bond is different. You'll probably be paying the interest before you will be paying the principal. Mm -hmm. uh, bonds can decrease return on equity. In other words, the same way that the return can increase, it could also decrease if the return is not significant enough. Okay? Now, bond trading. What, are, what do you think the reason is that we embark on bond trading? Is it similar to when we trade our stock that we purchase? I don't say yes. Yes, it is. Um, now, of course, if the value, the par value or the face value may be much higher than a stock, of course. But uh, bonds are traded openly on the market, just like how stocks are traded openly on the market. And... Um, Looking at the fact that bonds are a security and they can be sold, purchased, however freely a person um, decides to do so, the same thing happens with market value. Okay, the part value of that bond may be, may be um, the part value of that bond may be lower than whatever the market value is. That part value may be higher than whatever the market value is. What they have on the stock exchange is what we like to call a closing price, right? right. Um, so the closing price would be equal to or close to whatever par value is. Now bond issuance. This is what a bond will typically look like, and this is also in your text um, on page 556 at the top. The bond certificate. 
So the bond certificate is going to show, obviously, the face or par value of the bond itself, right? Whatever the interest rate is. And that it also shows the maturity date or proposed maturity date. Now, what about a bond indenture? A bond indenture. That bond indenture is what we like to call the contract. So the bond indenture is going to say, um, me as the person issuing this bond, I am going to tell you how often you're going to have to pay interest. Right. And if I say that you're going to have to pay interest semi-annually, that means twice a year. Mm -hmm. If I say you're going to have to pay interest quarterly, that means how many times a year? Three times a year. Three times a year, right? So the bond, this is not a bond indenture, this is a bond certificate. The bond certificate shows the face value of the bond, the interest rate, right? All of the, um, this little small print here. Everybody sees that? The small print at the bottom, that's the indenture part. That's the contract. You pay interest semi-annually for this bond, all right? So how does it go when a um, bond is issued? Corporation issues the bond to investors, right? right. And what happens with the selling price? What are they going to max the selling price out at? Whatever you pay for the bond? Not necessarily. It's going to depend. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Sometimes with, uh, because they pay periodic or, you know, more frequent interest payments, the way that you calculate the interest payment is going to be the bond face value or par value times whatever the interest rate was on the bond certificate times the amount of time that has lapsed. Okay. Um, transaction on the maturity date of the bond. On the maturity date of the bond is when you pay back the full face value or principal value of that bond. Here's an example issuing bonds at par. On January 1st, they issued a par value bond of 800000 at an interest rate of 9%. These interest dates, 630 and 1231, indicate that that's a semi-annual interest payment. Uh, maturity date is December 31st, 2032 year 2032, so 20 years from now. So this is showing the, the uh, receipt of cash being uh, received by the company for the bond. Um, and it's showing that a liability of bonds payable is being created because that has to be paid back within 20 years. Now, the first issuance or both semi-annual payments, they took the Principal value of 800000 multiplied by the interest rate of 9%. And because you're paying it in June, only six months have lapsed. That's half of a year, right? So multiply that times half to get the first interest payment, June 30th of 36000 And that's also going to be the same interest payment that's going to be paid December 31st. Now, when it's time for the bond to actually mature, at this point, face value has to be paid back. So we're just simply showing a reverse of transactions from when it was issued to us, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're showing that we're eliminating our liability of bonds payable for 800000 and we're paying out cash 800000 to pay that full principal balance of that bond. Now, sometimes bonds can be sold at a discount or they can be sold at a premium or they can be sold, you know, as is, no gain, no loss. The bond is set at a contract rate, okay? The market has its rate. At some point, if you sell a bond at a premium, that means that whatever you con uh, contracted to sell it as or whatever you stated the rate was, your that rate is going to be greater than whatever the market rate is. If you sell a bond even at par at principal value, that means that your contract rate is the same as whatever the market rate is. And if you sell a bond at a discount, that means that your contract rate was lower than whatever the market was charging. So you had to sell it at a discount. So 
here is an example of when we issue a bond at a discount. The face value was 100000 The rate, 96.454. Uh, the issue price, I'm sorry, 96.454% of par value. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Stated interest rate, 8%. Market interest rate, 10%. So what, this is obviously a discount situation, right? Contract rate, less than market rate. Bond will sell at a discount. Interest date, 631-1231, meaning they make semi-annual um, payments. And the bond date was the 31st of uh, 2013. It matures in two years, so that means it has to be paid back full face value. Um, December 31st, 2015. Now, here's the breakdown. You remember that uh, amount, 96.454? Okay. The par value was 100000 right? Cash proceeds, meaning what it actually sold for, was $96,454. There was a discount given of 3546 How do we know that? 100000 times 96.454% gives, us that, gives the, us that amount. So we show the cash that we received of 96454 We show the discount on the bonds payable, and we show the actual liability um, to be incurred, which is the full principal value of one hundred thousand. Now, when we do the balance sheet, looking at this discount that was given under the liability section, bonds payable face value of one hundred thousand less the discount three thousand five hundred and forty six, carrying value ninety six thousand four hundred and four. Down here, you know how we talk about when we were in chapter. 10, we looked at depreciation and things, right? But when it comes to liabilities, we like to do amortization. So we amortize liabilities. Using a straight line method, we took our discount, we divided it by four periods. Why four periods? Because we have semi-annual payments for two years. For two years. So that means twice per year. Everybody right. understands, right? So dividing that by four periods, that means that twice per year we pay $887 in a discount for this bond. Okay. Now amortizing a bond discount. What that is basically saying is here we're showing what discount we're giving, which is the 887. Cash received, because now we're recording interest. Um, they make this journal entry every six months to record the cash interest payment right and the amortization of the discount now if they were just making a cash interest payment no amortization involved no discount involved this would be much more simple than what you see but because it's being amortized because um there is a discount involved we're showing the total bond interest paid was 4887 discount given was 887 for that first um, and second interest payment for the year, cash, $4,000. Does everybody understand this? Notice the $4,000. Now, this is just, it's showing June 30th and December 31st, but it's really one payment. Um, face value of 100000 times that 8% interest rate that you saw a few slides before this, um, times half of the year which gives us 4000 That's the interest payment by itself. So that means they pay a total of 8000 every year in interest for this bond. But 4000 right now for this payment, plus adding the discount that we have to pay of 887 So it's a total of bond interest of 4887 Now, discount on bonds payable showing there and then the cash actually received from all of this which is the four thousand dollar payment you hmm? okay so amateurizing you know the payment the the discount given was 887 right, right. total interest payment itself is just the four thousand um, the actual interest expense, meaning everything they had to pay, which was 4887 which is 4000 plus 887 But going, starting from the beginning when this bond came out, remember the carrying value was 96454 right? right? And 
we show the interest payment of four thousand interest total interest expense four thousand eight hundred and eighty seven discount eight hundred and eighty seven this column here unamortized discount what do you think this means the you're subtracting that's it you're subtracting the discount and adding what where you're adding the carrying value to i mean you're adding the value to the carrying value okay so 3546 is where the discount started right, right. subtracting out the first uh discount given for the first semi-annual payment of 887 right. gives us a new unamortized discount of 2659 our carrying value went from 96,454 to add what? To add that um, 887. 887. So now we got 97,341. Going again, unamortized discount minus the next next discount given at the end of the year for the next M, uh, interest payment, 887. Now we're down to an unamortized discount of 1,772. We add that same 887 to our 97,341. We get 98,228. Going to the next year, uh, we subtract out the next discount payment, which is the next interest payment, 887, to uh, have a remainder of 885, right? Right. And then add that same 887 to 98,228 to get 99,115. Right. Going to the last, very last semi-annual interest payment. What has happened here? You zeroed out, so you got to add that 885 to that 999. Not that you zeroed out. Well, the question is, how did you zero out? It was only 885 amortized that last time because of what? Uh-uh, we're at the end of what now? Oh, we're at the end, end of the payment period. End of the two years. Mm -hmm. So now we got to reach, we got to pay back that bond face value, right? Mm -hmm. It's only 885 left. Subtract that from 885 on amortized. Also add that same 885 to 99,115. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, 99,115 to get to our face value. And notice it has all been rounded. Right. Because it may be one or two dollars off. So what happens if you issue a bond at a premium? Concepts still stay the same. The only difference is now the issue price is it higher or lower? Higher. Higher. So issue price is higher. Interest rate is now 12%. Market, market interest rate is 10%, um, which we know about what I showed you earlier. That's lower than what the stated rate is. So obviously, we're going to make a gain or sell this bond at a premium. Now, par value 100,000, cash proceeds 103.546 or 103,546 is what it's really worth. Um, that means that the premium that we're given. It's 3,546. Now, same thing still applies. Cash received from it was 103,546. Premium on it was 3,546. The bond payable is still at principal value of 100,000. And we still have to amortize it because it's a premium. So we're going to take our um, Premium amount, 3546 divided by four periods, which means two years, semi-annual uh, payments. To get 887 is still the same amount as that uh, previous discount was, but this is now a premium. I'll show you what changed. So now recording that first interest payment. Interest was at 100,000 times the 12% which uh, times half of a year, which gives us 6,000 interest payments. So that means in total, they pay at minimum 12,000 on interest every year for this bond. Um, the premium amount of 3,546 is divided by those four periods, giving us 887. Our total bond interest is the 6,000 minus what? The premium. Minus the premium, which gives us 5,113 showing the premium and then showing the amount of cash 
have had um, that we've had to pay out for the first interest payment. Now, this amortization schedule is a little different. How so? Because you, oh. Go ahead. Interest payment different? Yeah. Even though the premium amount is still the same? Right. However, remember before when we were doing a discount, it was subtract discount from unamortized. Mm -hmm. Also, add discount to carry value. Now, because it's a premium, we are still subtracting discount from unamortized. But we're also subtracting premium from what? The carry from carrying value. So that's the difference between a discount and a premium. Okay. So you have unamortized starting off at three thousand five hundred and forty-six. That's the full premium. If we subtract the premium amount of eight eighty-seven from that, we get a new unamortized of two thousand six hundred and fifty-nine. Also, we subtract that 887 from 103, 546, and we get a new carrying value of 102, 659. We keep doing that down just like we did the discount method to get back down to the bond carrying value. So bond pricing, cash outflows related to interest payments. What do you think this refers to? At this point, I'm on page 562. This is where it's so important to talk about uh, present values of bonds. And I know you guys have heard of present value, future value, those types of things. But now we're just dealing with present value. Um, cash outflows related to interest payments. In 24 months, there has been how much of interest? Four times four is 16, right? Yeah. So we don't had a total of 16,000 in 24 months that has been paid for interest. Um, and the face value of the bond did not change. The only thing that changed was the amount of interest. Now, present value. We don't know what the issue price is because we got to find the present value of it. Um, the par value or principal principal is still one hundred thousand. The interest rate is eight percent. Market market interest rate is higher at ten percent. So this is considered to be a discount, right? In your books. On page 562, exhibit 14.12, that we talk about present value of a discount. I want you to look in the back of your book at page B10. B is in boy, 10. Talk about present value and annuity. B10 and B11. The first table I want you to put a circle around or you know just put a highlight or an asterisk by it is table B.1. And the second table I want you to put an asterisk by is table B.3. B.1 and B.3. Now, table B.1 is for principal, okay, or maturity value. You can write that next to it so you know which tables to look at and how to properly do it. Table B.1 is for principal maturity. Table B.3 is strictly for interest. Again, table B.1 is for principal maturity. Table B.3 is for interest. 
Now, once you have that down pat, keep your finger or some kind of tab on that page so we can easily reference back and forth. Now, if you look up here, to calculate the present value, we need relevant interest rate and number of periods. So, if a company pays bonds back semi-annually, we're talking about two periods every year, okay? So, when you're looking in the back of your books at those tables, you don't go by the number of years, you go by the number of periods in those years. Now, semi-annual rate here is 5%. Uh, semi-annual period is four. Why? Because the bond is for two years. They make two payments over two years of interest, right? So we're talking about four periods. Semi-annual rate came from them taking the, mount, the market rate and dividing that by two. Okay? So if we're trying to find the present value of principal, we're going to use what table? B1. B1. When you go to B1 in the back of your book, how many periods are we going to go down? Four. four. And when you go down four periods, you're going to go over to what rate? Five percent. Five percent. And when you go over to five percent, what rate do you get? Zero point eight two two seven. So zero point eight two two seven. You're going to take that zero point eight two two seven and multiply that by the principal value of one hundred thousand to get what the present rate is of that bond. Everybody clear so far? Okay. Now, going down to interest, they make four interest payments, right? We've established that. So what table do you use to look at the present value of the interest? B3. So go to table B3, go down how many periods? Four. Four periods and go over to what rate? Five percent. What present value rate do you get? Three point five four six zero, right? Three point five four six zero. You want to multiply that by four thousand, okay? And that's going to give you what? Fourteen thousand one hundred eighty-four. You would have been paying how much in interest? Four thousand. Four thousand times four periods, which equals what? Sixteen thousand. But the present value of it today is what? Fourteen thousand one hundred and eighty-four. Everybody's clear about that, right? So the company basically was issued a bond at a principal value of one hundred thousand. It's really only worth if they decided to sell it. It's only worth how much? Nine hundred thousand four hundred fifty-four dollars. No, without interest. Oh, without eighty-two thousand two hundred and seventy, and then if they add on interest or tack on interest uh, to whoever they sell it to, they can only get because it's only worth right now fourteen thousand one hundred and eighty-four dollars instead of the sixteen thousand that they paid to procure it. Wow! Everybody gets that right? Mm -hmm. So technically, it would be at a loss. That's it. They call it, well, to them it was issued at a discount, but yeah, they're losing money right. if they sell it. And then the one where you do the present value of the premium, it's done the same way, just you're doing it at $6,000 interest level, right? Okay, so bond, but you guys know the, the gist of going where to find the rate for principal, going where to find the rate for interest, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Retirement of bonds. Why do we retire a bond? Maybe it's no longer get used to it. Why no longer the value? The interest rate is too low. Or the interest rate in the market is higher than the bond. So you want to return it because nobody wants to buy it. That's it. <laughs> if it's too high on the market, it won't be bought. So we need to retire it at that value, at that rate. 
um, so that we don't lose any more money. money. And we, we like to also call it bond redemption. Oh. Uh, but at this, for this example, they have retired their bonds for 100,000 cash. In other words, what did they do? They took care of that bonds payable, right, for 100,000. Um, it says because any discount or premium is gonna be fully amortized at maturity, the carrying value is gonna be equal to whatever the part of the principal was. So this is the way it works. If carrying value is greater than retirement price, there's a gain. If carrying value is less than retirement price, there's a loss. Um, assume that 100000 a $100,000 bond is going to be retired after that first interest payment. The carrying value is 104.5. That is, is that higher or lower than retirement price? I'm sorry. I'm carrying sorry. value is 104.5. Principal value was 100000 Is it higher or lower than retirement price? Higher. So the bonds have a gain, right, or premium of 3000 So this is how they record it. They show that they are retiring that bond for the face value of $100,000. they are showing the premium on them retiring that bond was $4,500. they are showing a gain on the retirement of that bond of $1,500. And they're showing the cash that they actually received was $103,000. Uh, $103, now, how do we get the cash amount? How much was the bond uh, carry? What was the carrying value? 1045. 105.5, and what was the premium? 100,000. Oh, premium, 3,000. Premium was 3,000. Right. So, what has happened here is they've subtracted the principal of 100,000 from the 104.5, which gives us the 4500 for the actual premium. Here they said the bond had a call premium of 3000 but what happened? Did they do it for half? Or is it really 104.5 plus 3000 which gives us what? One oh seven five, right? One oh seven five um subtracting the one hundred thousand gives us seven thousand five hundred, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. Seven thousand five hundred minus what we know is the premium of forty five hundred remain gives us what? How much is remaining? Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Are y'all calculating that right? Yeah. It's, you said one oh seven. 1045 plus 3000 gave you 1075 and then minus the 100,000 gave you 7500 and then the 4500 from the 7500 is 3000. Right. So the 3000 you're going to add that to what? Principal. Let me try to go another route. 100,000 which is principal subtracted from carrying value leaves 4500 so we know that's our premium right mm -hmm. now going the opposite way the reason why we can say we only received 103000 is why because they called it and gave the $3000 because they called it early they called that $3000 which means you got to add it to whatever the principal was which is 103000 mm -hmm. that's the full cash price that we got that's the cash value that we had to pay out for, it, okay? And 103,000 from 104,500 shows that there was a gain made of 1,500. Because they paid 104,500 over, so it is a gain. Yes, the difference. All right. Conversion. Sometimes bonds can be converted to stock. It's all liabilities. They're all securities, right? So in this case, still par value, principal value is 100,000. Uh, carrying value is also 100,000. However, it's converted to 15,000 shares of $2 par, common, par value common stock. Now 15,000 shares times $2 gives us what? 30,000. 30, so that $30,000 is what the stock was actually worth. 
okay? Even though we traded it for what? 100,000. 100, so we made what in this case? There was a gain to be made, right? Um, showing principal value of 100,000 being paid out. Common stock was really only worth 30,000, showing that there was an additional money, monies paid of 70,000 going and paid in capital in excess of par. The long-term notes payable, we are talking about liabilities. Uh, notes payable is a liability or long-term liability that extends beyond um, a period of 12 months sometimes. So what this is saying is a single payment of principal plus interest. So nothing periodic, right? It means the time that the note matures is also the time to pay all the interest accrued on it. Um, or there could be a situation where you could pay a note payable by paying principal and interest periodically, okay, throughout the life of the note. So that's what we like to call installment notes. What type of things do you know we have installments on? Cars, mortgage, anything else? Credit cards. Credit cards, yes. All of that is installment in which when you make a payment, you're making a payment for both principal and interest throughout the life of that liability, right? So this example, they borrowed 60000 from a bank to purchase equipment. They signed an 8% note requiring six annual payments of principal plus interest. Six payments over the life of how many years? Six years. Six years, right? Six annual payments. Okay. So cash of 60000 this is just showing you, and they're, they're doing present value. What's the present value of this loan? Use your tables. Think about how many periods you're, you're taking six periods at this point. At 8%. At 8%. But what would you do with that 8%? You're looking at table B3 at this point because you're looking for interest. No. What what did you use to do that? Uh -huh. Four point six two two nine. How many periods? How, how much uh the percent? Eight percent. How many periods? Six. Six uh six period. It's more 7%? No, it's 4.6. Yeah, it's 8%. Oh, 8%. It's 8%, but the only time we divide that percent is when it's semi-annual payments. In this case, it's not semi-annual payments. These are just annual payments every single year that we can count six years in total. So six years down to 8%, the rate is 4.6229. We're going to take that 4.6229 and multiply that by what? The 60,000. Which gives you what? The 12,900. Which is the total amount of our what? Amen. Principal and interest. Principal and interest. So this journal entry, you got a debit to cash for 60,000. I mean, we received 60,000 in cash mm -hmm. and we created a liability of notes payable of 60,000. Now, once it's time to make these payments, we said the payment is going to be twelve thousand nine hundred and seventy-nine each year, right? What has happened is beginning balance of this note was sixty thousand. Uh, out of that twelve thousand nine hundred and seventy-nine, how much of it was interest? Forty-eight hundred. And we know that because we took 60000 and we multiplied that by the 8% interest rate, right? Um, so the 4800 that's just right now, the principal balance was 60000 So multiplying that by 8%, we got 4800 for interest. And, of course, subtracting 4800 from that 12979 yearly payment, we had a remaining going towards principal of 8179 Now, 60000 minus 12000 
979 payment brings us down to an ending balance of 51,821, which also becomes our new balance for the next year. So now our new balance, $51,821, um, we're going to multiply that by 8%. That's going to give us our interest part of this payment for the year, which is 4146 Okay. Now, subtracting 4146 from 12979 gives us what portion is going towards principal of 8833 Are we clear so far? Might help. That works. So now we subtract this twelve thousand nine hundred and seventy nine, right? Mm -hmm. From the fifty one thousand eight hundred and twenty one to get a new principal balance of 42,988. That 42,988 now becomes our new amount for the next year. Now, taking 42,988 and multiplying that by that 8% gives us a new interest payment for the year of $3,439. That $3,439 being subtracted from the $12,979 payment equals the principal portion of $9,540. When we subtract uh, $12,979 now from this $42,988, we get a new principal balance of $33,448. Everybody got it, right? I don't need to mark any more red. You good? All right. Okay, so it says, let's record the first payment made on December 31st, 2013 by Fog Hog to the bank. We know their interest payments are 4800 right, for that first year. So we show an interest expense, 4800 We show a debit to notes payable or decreasing notes payable by 8179 Both of these equal the $12,979 payment. At the bottom here, refer back to the amortization. Going to the next year, the new interest payment now is $4,146. The portion of this nine, uh, $12,979 that goes towards principal is $8,833. This is interest, right? This is principal. Same thing here, interest, principal. Why is this coming in handy for you? Not just because you're an accounting major, but also because I know somebody in here has mortgage. I know someone in here has a car installment. When they get ready to figure out your payment, you now know the accurate way to figure out what it really should be. And if you feel like you're being cheated, the best way for you to know is by knowing how to find out what your principal payment is. You got present value tables in the back of your book, right? Mm -hmm. Make a copy of that. Carry it in your purse or something. You know you're going to start a new loan or something. You tell them what you know your payments are going to be. Right. Don't let them tell you. Cool? Okay, mortgage notes and bonds. We know what a mortgage is. There's a legal buying agreement that you go into when you are purchasing a home um, and getting a loan from someone in order to get that loan or to get that home, right? And so that gives the lender the right to do what? It says proceeds from the sale of your assets specifically identified in the mortgage contract. All that means is that if you fail to make your contractual agreement, if you fail to make the payment that you have agreed to pay on that 30-year mortgage, um, they have rights and claims to whatever assets you have on hand. They can take them, they can sell them, they can do whatever and put that towards whatever it is that you owe them. Okay? 
And that is it for the lecture part of chapter 14. Now, at this time, it's 1039. I'm going to tell you what problems we need to work on as a group, and then we're going to go over them. Ms. Thomas and all of you can be just in one group. I need you to do Quick Study 14-1, Quick Study 14-3. Ms. Andreessen, you and Ms. Williams, can you do Quick Study 14-2? And quick study 14-5. So again, Ms. Thomas, if you guys could do quick study 14-1 and 14-3. Ms. Andreessen, if you guys could do quick study 14-2 and 14-5. And so we'll go over it right at uh, 11.05.